Major Guevara, in your speech to the General Assembly day before yesterday, you accused the United States of helping Cuba's neighbors prepare new aggression against her. We, in turn, have often accused your government of abetting subversion in other Latin American countries. Do you see any way out of this situation, any way to improve relations? I think uh, with regards to solutions, there are solutions, and I think there is only one. We have said repeatedly to the government of the U.S. that we do not want anything but to forget us, that they, that they do not consider us even for good or evil. From New York City, Face the Nation, a spontaneous and unrehearsed news interview with Ernesto Che Guevara, Cuban Minister of Industry. Major Guevara will be questioned by CBS News United Nations correspondent Richard C. Hotlett, Ted Schultz of the Washington Bureau of the New York Times, and CBS News correspondent Paul Niven. Major Guevara, we have more questions about Cuba's relations with this country and with the communist countries and about your own internal situation. Major Guevara, you said a moment ago you would simply like us Americans to forget Cuba. Uh, your speech the other day suggested that you can't forget us. You, you consider us a hostile government 90 miles away. How can you expect us to forget you? I didn't say exactly that you that I expected to forget this. You ask a solution. And I said, what was this, that solution in the present moment? If it's possible or not, that's another question. Uh, Major Guevara, on several opportunities recently, Premier Fidel Castro has suggested in interviews with visiting newspaper men and on other occasions that a new effort be made to normalize relations between Cuba and the United States, particularly in the field of trade and exchanges. Uh, as an economist, do you feel yourself that a resumption of relations of this nature would be useful or welcome for Cuba? In other words, would you like to see the relations normalized? Not as an economist, because I have never considered myself an economist, but only an official of the Cuban government, as another Cuban. I think harmonious relations with the U.S. would be very good for us, from the economical point of view, more than in any other field, because all our industry has been, has been established by the U.S. and primary products and repair parts that we have to make with much difficulty or to bring from other areas could come directly. And besides, sugar, which traditionally we had the American market, is also and near. Major, uh, if my recollection is right, in 1960, you made several speeches, particularly one in March of 1960, saying that for Cuba to go on selling sugar to the United States was a form of colonialism to which Cuba was subjected. Have you changed your mind about this? Naturally, because those were different conditions. We sold sugar with specific conditions established by American buyers, which in turn dominated the internal market and production in Cuba. Now, if we would sell sugar to the U.S., it would be the Cuban government, the one who would sell it, and it would be a complete profit for our people. Dr. Guevara, Washington has said that there are two political conditions for the establishment of normal relations between the United States and Cuba. One is the abandonment of your military commitment to the Soviet Union. The other is the abandonment of the policy of exporting revolution to Latin America. Uh, do you see any chance of a change in either of these points? Absolutely. We don't put no condition of any kind to the U.S. We don't want it to change its system. We don't want this racial discrimination to cease in the U.S. We put no conditions to the establishment of relations, but we neither put conditions to... But my question was whether you would accept these conditions placed by the United States on the resumption of normal relations. 
We will not accept any conditions from the U.S. We will not accept conditions imposed by the U.S. to us. But when, in the matter of the of the uh, the missiles, the Russian missiles on Cuba and the Cuban military relations with the Soviet Union, how can the United States be sure that Cuba is not a strategic threat once again? Would you accept uh, United Nations inspection or inspection by the Organization of American States if you do not permit American on-site inspection of Cuba? You talked about the Organization of American States. Yesterday, the, Colum uh, the day before yesterday, the Colombian delegate spoke about the orbit of the OAS. It is, in effect, an orbit which gyrates around the U.S. An inspection by such delegates would be an inspection by the U.S. You talk about that the United States don't feel secure, and we ask the U.S., do we ourselves feel secure that we have no missiles against Cuba? Then cannot we reach an harmonious solution? Because the, two, the countries are equal in the world. Let's inspect all bases, atomic bases of the U.S. And let's inspect also what we have in Cuba. And if uh, you want, let's liquidate all atomic bases in Cuba and the, in the U.S. And we are in complete agreement with that. Major Guevara, are you in fact trying to export your revolution? Are you every day shipping arms to other Latin American countries? Are you bringing revolutionaries from other countries to Cuba, training them, sending them home? I also had an opportunity to say at the assembly, and I can repeat it emphatically now, revolutions are not exportable. Revolutions are created by oppressive conditions which Latin American countries exercise against their peoples. And there comes rebellion. And afterwards, new Cubas will emerge. We are not the ones who create revolutions. It's the imperialist system and its allies, internal allies, the ones who create for revolution. But does not your attitude toward the present government of Venezuela, which is considered in many other countries leftist and progressive, suggest that you consider any government oppressive which is not communist? In absolute, no. What we consider is that the Venezuelan government is not a leftist government, has nothing of a leftist government, it's an oppressor, an oppressive government, is a murderer. He murders them in the, in the peasant fights in the region of Falcon, for example, where there are military advisors of the U.S. There is in Venezuela today, in spite of the American press uh, does not reveal it, is there any the gov Venezuelan government is not a leftist government. Is there any government in this hemisphere uh, which Cuba considers to be progressive? The word progressive is an ambiguous word. There is one government with which we keep diplomatic relations, the government of Mexico, with which we have good relations. Our systems are different. We respect their system. We are in a complete harmony up to the date, and I have the hope that it will continue like that. But if you ask me the image of Latin America, there are some countries which oppress their peoples much more, and among the less least oppressive, among those which we could have perfectly normal relations without any difficulties, we could have Uruguay, Chile, maybe Costa Rica, but the U.S. do not permit us. But all these countries have broken diplomatic relations with Cuba. Don't you feel yourself isolated when you have no friend at all in this hemisphere? We have a lot of friends, but not among the governments. The friends are in the peoples. And in the last instance, the peoples will be the rulers of those states. If we may change the geographic scene of your friendships, or no friendships in the world, uh, you made a visit to Moscow in November last month. Since the change in the Soviet leadership, uh, we've had the impression here that the government of Cuba had taken a rather unclear position on the difficulties between the Soviet Union and China ideologically. 
Could you tell us whether as a result of your visit, is it clearer or easier for the government of Cuba to adopt a clear position in relation to the Soviet Chinese problem? You can have the impression that our attitude is not clear, but we have the contrary impression. Our attitude is very clear. In effect, there is a conflict, an ideological conflict, which we all know. We have stated our position with, in the sense of unity among socialist states, unity as a first measure. And always we argue that unity is necessary because this unity goes in favor goes in favor of the US which are our enemy and everything that goes in favor of the enemy must be eliminated that's why we are in favor of unity we feel that there is a necessity to to f strengthen this unity and it, that it will be strengthened and then the, the block the monolithic block of socialist countries will be formed again early this year I believe it was first in March then again in June the Soviet government which then had Premier Khrushchev at its head issued invitations to a number of communist or Marxist Leninist parties in the world including to the Cuban Socialist Party uh, or rather the Cuban part of Socialist Revolution to attend a preparatory meeting in Moscow of communist parties uh, my uh, memory is that the Cuban party was one of the very few never to have answered the question the invitation rather we see today <coughs> that the Soviet government has renewed invitation for a March preparatory meeting of uh, communist or Marxist Leninist countries would your government now accept or your party would now accept the Soviet invitation it will be started in the proper moment and will give the answer this is an invitation which is not made to the government but to the party and the party is the one who has to answer. I am here representing the government now. Major Guevara, you are one, probably the outstanding exponent of guerrilla war in the Western Hemisphere, and you have said that the problems of revolution in Latin America will be settled by bullets rather than by ballots. And in general, the, your, your uh, dynamic approach to these uh, things seems to run much closer to the communist line, to the Chinese communist line. Also, um, Cuba has never signed the treaty banning nuclear weapons tests in the outer atmosphere and the atmosphere and uh, and in the uh, in, in the sea uh, this is also uh, the Chinese communist position doesn't that put you really in terms of your practical behavior and, and policy on the Chinese side of the communist fence well there are three or four questions in, in perched in one I'll try to answer one by one in the first place, there is a statement I would like to deny, or maybe the translation wasn't accurate. I heard you said you, I am the representative of guerrilla in this hemisphere. I am not the representative of guerrilla in this hemisphere. I would say that the representative would be Fidel Castro, which was the leader of our revolution and who had the most outstanding role in the direction and of the revolutionary struggle and directs the strategy of the Cuban government. As regards the two other specific questions, we do not have to participate in the controversy because they are very specific problems. The problem of a peaceful transition to socialism, we do not discuss it as a theoretical question. But in America, it is very difficult, and it's near the impossible. That is why specifically in America we say that the road to the liberation of peoples, which will be the road of, to, of socialism, will go through bullets in almost all countries. And I can make a prophecy with tranquility that you will see it. With regards to the problem of the signing of the new test ban treaty, we welcomed that step as a measure which tended to prevent the uh, aggravation of tensions, but we pointed out very clearly 
that us, with a military American base in our territory where there could be any sort of weapons, where we can, where we have to endure every kind of provocations, we have to support, endure the flights over our territory. We cannot sign that treaty because it would be a treason to our people. That's independently to the fact that we welcome the treaty in its worldwide terms as beneficial to the world, but only a step. We cannot remain here. We must continue forward if we want to prevent a world war. You have been over the years, I believe, a very articulate and uh, candid critic yourself of that which was occurring with the Cuban economy. I have read your speeches in which you have criticized the uh, errors in policies and errors in judgments. Now that you're approaching the uh, seventh year of your revolution, would you try to uh, assess for us briefly just what is happening to the economy in your country? Do you feel that you might begin to uh, rise from the point where you have you been? What projection of the economy would you make for 1965? Will it be the seventh lean year or not necessarily? It's a very difficult question to answer it in a very short uh, moments. I am being bombed by questions of all kinds. I'll try to be very concise and try to explain to the American people. We had a great number of mistakes in the economic field, naturally. I am not the critic. It it is Fidel Castro, the one who has criticized repeatedly the mistakes we have made. And he has explained why we have made them. We did not have a previous preparation. We made mistakes in agriculture. We made mistakes in industry. All these mistakes are being uh, settled now. In industry, we are now concentrating our best effort in trying to to make uh, plants work at a maximum capacity We're trying to replace the equipment which is in bad conditions due to lack of spare parts of the US and that we do cannot get from the US to extend our industry later on the basis of the uh, our primary resources and to lessen our dependence on external markets and dedicate our efforts in 1965 to the aspect of security and hygiene of uh, work to make our plants better for the worker that the worker may feel really a man there we have uh, taken plants from the capitalist system where the most important thing was to produce, especially in Cuba. I do not imply that in the U.S. plants, industrial plants, are now places of exploitation where man is oppressed. I know that there are a great number of advantages here for the American worker, but those advantages in Cuba had not reached, and conditions are very bad, very unhealthy. We have to dedicate our efforts to better the life, the time passed by the worker in the industrial plant. That will be one of our main efforts during the next year. Dr. Guevara, you have protested against the presence of the American naval base at Guantanamo and the continued American reconnaissance over flights over Cuba. Will you take any military action, either against the base or the planes? We will. We had to explain at the assembly the other day that we do not boast. We know the power of the U.S. We do not fool ourselves about this power. We say that the U.S. government wants us to pay a very high price for this unstable peace we enjoy today. And the price we are in a position to pay is only comes only 
to the frontiers of dignity, not beyond. If we had to kneel in order to live in peace, they will have to kill us before. If they do not want to go to that point, we will continue to living in the best way possible, that is, in this not peaceful coexistence that we have today with the U.S. What does that mean in terms of practical diplomacy, Major? What, what do you propose to do? We have uh, denounced in all assemblies, in all places where we have had the opportunity to speak, the illegality of flights and the fact that there is a base against the will of the Cuban people. Furthermore, we have denounced the great number of, of violations, of provocations from that base, according to statistics, little rough statistics, four provocations every day. And we have asked the non-aligned countries and the General Assembly of the UN to take measures to prevent things like these. Could we turn very briefly now to some of the internal political problems in Cuba about which we hear in this country in a very indirect way and we are intrigued by them. Uh, we read recently that uh, an outstanding member of the former Communist Party of Cuba, uh, former Senator Ordoki, had been placed under arrest. Um, we have heard a great deal about the tensions between the so-called old line Communist Party and the 26th of July movement type of group. We learned on Tuesday that Major Martinez Sanchez, who was a close friend and companion of you and Dr. Castro, tried to commit suicide. What is happening internally in Cuba? There's nothing happening which we cannot say publicly. The fact of the attempted suicide by Augusto Martinez was explained in a concise and exact form by our government in a communique. There's absolutely nothing else to add. I understand that the American people has a right, especially the press, which is not very friendly to us, to make all suppositions and ideas about this fact, in fr this disgraced fact. There is always the possibility of all sorts of uh, speculations on this, but the fact is as we expressed it. Augusto Martinez Sanchez was separated due to administrative problems and, he ha and his reaction was to attempt suicide. We regret it because of him and we regret it because of the revolution because, because the, it has given foot to this uh, speculations. With regards to the arrest of Mr. Ordoki, we also stated publicly what we were able to say at that moment. And we have expressed that in the proper opportunity, everything will be explained or Mr. Odoki will have a public satisfaction. All our public documents reflect our absolute truth. Major, may I ask you what percentage of the people of Cuba support the revolution? Well, there is a joke which you made with you circulated. I don't know if you want to refer to the joke about the Castro brothers. We have 10 seconds. In 10 seconds? It's very difficult. In this moment, we do not have elections. But the great majority of the Cuban people supports this Thank government. Thank you, Major I don't know. Guevara, for being here to face the nation. Major Guevara, in your speech to the general...